Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. In this session we're going to be looking at finding the second moment of area for this I-beam. In the previous video what we looked at was finding the second moment of area for rectangular cross section beams about the neutral axis. I want to take the same concept and now apply it with this I-beam. You might be thinking well this is a different cross section. It is but what we can do is adopt the same principles as the rectangular cross sections and apply it here. So how do we do that? What we first say is we identify those rectangular cross sections. What we can do is we can say this top I is one cross section. We can say this middle is one. And now we've got a, another base at the bottom. So now can you see how we've got three rectangular cross sections? So what I'm going to do is just draw a line here so we know exactly where the difference is. So this is going to be now my A section. I'm going to label I'm going to give that section a label A. This I'm going to give it a B and now this I'm going to give it a C. Now for I beams when we're looking at a multitude of rectangular cross sections we can't just sum up the cross uh, the second moment of area for each rectangular cross section what we say is that the second moment of area about the neutral axis is equal to the summation of each individual moment of the areas we've just worked out plus the area of each rectangle so that's a b and c multiplied by y and I'm going to give it the letter i for each so a b c squared now what is y well because we've if we by looking at this i beam what we see is we've got a uniform i beam we've got the same width as the bottom so the top and the bottom is the same and we've got the same height throughout so therefore we can say is that the neutral axis is going to lie right down the middle. And from that point what I'm going to give is the label of Y just like my previous videos. Y. So Y is going positive upwards. What we do is I've got this table and this table is going to help us find exactly the, the total moment of area. So this is going to be my A section that's going to be my B and C. So I'm going to work through each individual section looking at the entire rectangular cross sections and working out the area, the second moment of area, the distance Y and, and then multiplying the area by the distance Y squaring. So if we take section A we've got 10 mil by the entire width which is given in the question 50. So we can say 10 multiplied by 50 is 500 millimeters squared. I, I again, remember for rectangular cross sections we're going to say that it is B D cubed over 12 and D is the direction of the load so you've imagined the load is going right on this top surface here. So therefore the bending direction is this thickness 10 millimeters and then the B value will be the base which is 50 mil. So here we can say it's 50 times 10 cubed, all divided by 12. What we notice is that A is exactly the same as C. So what we can do is just fill that in as 2, which is 10 times 50 as the area, which is 500 millimeters squared. And the moment of area is exactly the same 50, which is the B value multiply by 10 cubed all over 12. Now the distance y. Now I said the distance y originates from the neutral axis. So here what we say is this value about the neutral axis is 0. So what we say is for this section A which is a uniform section the neutral axis about this cross section rectangular cross section is going to be right in the middle here. 
and that's going to be in the middle of the thickness which is five millimeters so that's and then what we do is find this total distance and that's going to be the distance y a for the section a so we know this length is 100 which is between section a and section c so the middle value or the halfway through is 50 and then we plus another 5 mil to get to the middle of section A. So that's going to be 55. And that's going to be exactly the same as section C. That distance is going to be 50 and halfway through to get the neutral axis is going to be another 5 mil which is 55. And then what we say is for section C, C has an area which is the entire height which is 100 by the thickness of 5 millimeters so that's going to be 100 multiplied by 5 which is again 500 millimeters squared our i so the bending direction is going down so the bending direction d is 100 millimeters and the b is going to be 5 so that's going to be 5 multiplied by 100 cubed all over 12. As we've established now this rectangle, this I-beam is symmetrical and section B is in the middle of A and C, this neutral axis which is 50 millimeters halfway through the entire height is exactly the same point as the neutral axis so that Y distance is 0 and then what we do is we get the a value which is our area we multiply by y squared so we've got 500 multiplied by 55 squared and that gives us one five one two five double zero that's going to be the exactly the same as section c and now for section b as we're multiplying by y squared and y zero that's going to be zero so now using this equation we can find out the second moment of area for this i beam so we take the summation of this value and this value so what does that equal so if we do 50 times 10 cubed all over 12 and then we again we plus it exactly the same as c and then we take the value of cross section b that is going to equal four two five zero 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 now for a y squared if we sum it all up again we got three zero two five zero 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 so therefore i about the neutral axis is equal to the summation of four to five zero 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 plus three zero two five zero 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 and that is going to equal three point four five times ten to the power of six millimeters to the power of four and here's your final answer so hopefully that's made sense if you've enjoyed this video please leave a like please consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video take care